Hey, Spencer. I bet your pleased work's over. Will you be coming straight home? Rose, listen, babe. I'm real sorry. What's wrong? Did they give you overtime again? And my coworker Katie called in saying a kid was sick today. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get away anytime soon. Katie? She was the one with the little boy, right? Yeah, that's her. Apparently her son has a fever and won't stop coughing. There's a good chance she has whatever it is too. The last thing we need in our hands is another pandemic. I never want to hear the word, I never want to hear the word lockdown again. Long story short, she took the day off. Oh, I see. I can't say I'm not disappointed with that being Christmas week and all. I know you work in a care home, but I thought you said your hours would be going down around this time. I prepared a huge dinner for us. I'm so sorry, babe. They were supposed to be reducing our hours, but there's so much unexpected crap pop up over the last few days you wouldn't believe. I'll tell you what, I'll definitely get off early tomorrow. I wouldn't miss Christmas Day with you for the world. Really? But how do you know you'll be able to? Won't Katie still be off? Well, there's a will, there's a way. Leave it with me. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you, sweetie. I've been working hard on my end too, you know. Something tells me this Christmas year's dinner will blow your mind. Get excited. Go, cool, I can't wait. You have been really busy lately, though. What exactly is it? Is everything okay? Oh, you know, just some things here and there. Anyway, aren't you going to be pretty busy yourself? I remember you saying things pick up for you at work around New Year. Sure, but I've been carefully planning out my schedule since last month to make sure we still have plenty of us time. This is going to be our first New Year together since getting married, after all. It'd be a crime not to enjoy it to the fullest. And it'd be such a shame to have what should be a special time ruined by some boring old work. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Anything on New Year's Eve? You said you were gonna message your mom. Yeah, about that. It's looking like I probably won't get the day off. What? Work again? But I thought you were supposed to be finishing up on the 28th. That was the plan. But things have changed. Katie being off through a huge spanner in the works. Best case scenario, I'm in till late evening. I can't guarantee I'll make it back in time for the celebrations. I see. Does that mean we're not going over to your mom's anymore? I hate to say it, but yeah, I told we're not going to be able to make it this year. Sorry, babe. I could hardly expect you to go on your own. Hmm. I guess you're right. It might have been a little awkward with just me there. Don't get me wrong. I think your mom and dad are great. They're super kind, but I'm still kind of nervous around them. Right? How about you go back and see your own folks for New Year's instead? Wait, what? You mean we're going to spend it apart? What choice do we have, babe? Best case scenario, I get home late. Worst case scenario, I don't make it back till you're fast asleep. Wouldn't you rather be with your parents instead of waiting around for me on your own when I might not even make it in time? You'd be bored and lonely. I'd feel bad. I could always do a big clean to keep myself occupied. Nah, let's save that for my next day off. We could do it together. It'll be fun. Your next day off? <laughs> Yeah, right. You don't get days off anymore. Even when you're supposed to, the boss ends up calling you in. That's cool. My next day off will be fine. Katie should be back by then, so they'll have everything covered without me. Won't you be sad? I was so looking forward to us spending our first New Year's together. Sure I will, but I'll still have a big smile on my face and I think about how we're going to spend the rest of our lives together. I'll never let you escape, babe. I hope you know that. You're mine forever. I guess. It's always next year. I'll make sure we definitely spend it at my folks' house then. And we'll celebrate with twice as much beer to make it for the last time. It makes way more sense for you to spend it with your mom and dad this time around. You know, they love having you there. Besides, they're not going to be around forever, you know? 
That applies to your parents too, Spencer. Exactly! That's why we should make the most of the time we have with our folks while we can. So about it, honey cheeks. Turn that frown upside down and go see your folks, okay? Um... Fine. I'll spend New Year's at my mom and dad's place then. I guess I may as well make the most of it and get my mom to teach me how to cook her famous roast. That's the spirit. I've never tried your mom's roast, but I gotta admit, I start salivating every time I hear you talk about it. My mom's cooking, on the other hand, sucks. <laughs> she always uses ready-made stuff. But she buys quality, right? Is it really that different to making it from scratch? You bet it is. You'll see when you try my mom's roast next year. I can't wait, babe. Next year's new year is gonna be a blast. <laughs> Hold your horses, sweetie. It's a little while away yet. Let me know if anything changes with work, okay? Who knows? Maybe there will be a miracle and we'll still be able to make it to your mom and dad's place in time. You know, to watch the countdown together. Sure thing. You study yourself though, babe. It's like a miracle. I'd love it if we could, but don't get your hopes up. Spencer, you're late again today. Are you still mad about Christmas Day? Come on, babe, I apologize for that already. But you promised to make it home on time. Not only were you late, but you didn't even message me. Did they confiscate your phone at work now? I was so worried. I thought maybe you got into an accident or something. I know it was wrong of me, babe. I'm sorry. I was so focused on trying to get everything done early, I lost track of time and forgot to check my phone. So that's why you didn't reply to my messages? Sorry. As if that wasn't bad on its own. You didn't even eat any of the Christmas dinner I slaved for hours over a hot stove to cook. Do you have any idea how many weeks of preparation went into that? I had no appetite because I was so tired. I was, it was the middle of the night when I finally got back. Oh, please, babe, can we just move past this already? I know I should have let you know, but even if I did, I had no choice but to stay late. Work is work, what can I do? To be honest, I'm kind of getting sick of you whining at me for stuff I have no control over. What do you expect? Broken promises are a daily occurrence with you these days. I feel like I can hardly believe a word you say anymore. Looks like I'm gonna be doing this big New Year cleanup on my own. What do you want me to do? God, you're such a pain in my backside lately. What happened to you? What do you want from me, woman? Should I tell my boss to stick it up his ass and lose my job? I'd have nothing but free time then. Is that what you want, huh? Is it? Speak to me like you're, you're... You speak to me like you're my freaking mom. I'm doing my best to put bread on the table and all you do is complain. I have a job of my own, you know. It's not like I don't work hard myself. We both put bread on a table because we both work full time. It's a team effort. Or at least it's supposed to be. Sure, when things are hectic for one of us, the other should be there to offer support. I get that. But you've been leaving me to do all of the housework by myself for months now. You do know I do literally everything around the house, don't you? I know there's no way you haven't noticed. I'm heckin' busy, Rose! And once again, Spencer, so am I. Do you have any idea how champ-packed my schedule was from last month until just before Christmas? I crammed everything into the halftime. It normally take me so me and you could spend the holiday season together. Mine and your jobs are not the same, babe. I can't believe it even compare them. What's that supposed to mean? It's a well-known fact that men work at least ten times harder than women. What's the problem with you doing a little housework here and there if you... Have more free time than me. You said it yourself was supposed to be a team effort, but you seem dead set on making me play solo. Why am I even wasting my breath? You just don't get it. Jesus, Spencer. Is there really any need to speak to me like that? You're the one acting belligerent. 
Would it kill you to be there to support your husband while he's out working back-breaking hours to bring home the bacon? Would it, huh? Huh? Please calm down. I want to be there to support you. But you only come home to sleep these days. What the heck's wrong with that? Obviously, I'm going to spend less time at home when things are crazy at work. I don't mind picking up the slack at home when you're busy with work, Spencer. That's not what upsets me. What upsets me is the fact that you don't even seem to care. You speak to me with such coldness and disdain, I feel like I barely recognize you anymore. What happened to the kind, loving man I married? I'm right here, babe. It's me, your big, girly teddy bear. I'm doing this because I care. I'm super grateful for you doing the housework. I thought that was obvious, but I guess I have to actually tell you. Jeez, we've also married a whole year now. I thought you'd understand me by now. You never used to speak to me like dirt. God damn it, here we go again with the victim bullshit. I can't take any more of this. Fine, I'm the bad guy and everything wrong with your life is my fault. Happy now? <sighs> That's not what I'm saying. Seriously, Spencer, what's going on with you? Did something happen? Nope, I'm bound to run out of patience eventually when you constantly harp on at me about Christmas like this. No, it's not just Christmas. Something about you changed before that. No way, you're imagining it. God, no, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have spoken to you like that. To tell you the truth, babe, I'm hella stressed working all these hours. I let my emotions get the better of me. You're bound to be stressed out working this much. You're only human. It's not healthy to overdo it like this. You haven't had a day off in months. You're right. Sorry, babe, I'm calm now. Listen, I think I can book a day off for early next year, so let's make some time to spend together then, okay? Let's just chill out together for a change. Uh, that sounds great, sweetie. I think some relaxation time to shake off the stress of this year is just what we both need. I'll rustle you up some food to heal your worn-out body and mind. Sorry I spoiled the atmosphere the day before you're gonna see your folks. <laughs> it's fine, sweetie. You're right. I should have been more understanding. You're stressed and the last thing you needed was me on your case over things you can't help. I'm sorry, too. I guess we both overstepped the mark a little, huh? What do you say? Should we make up? My shift tomorrow starts a little later than usual, so we can spend some time together in the morning while you get ready for work and I can see you off. In fact, you know what? How about I drive you to the station? Thanks. I'd really like that. If you want to relax at home before I work, I really don't mind taking the bus, though. Good luck with work. Spencer, I just got home. Where are you going? Sorry, I went to my folks' place. What? My mom said I should come over for some food if I was on my own. You said yourself you might not be able to make it back tonight because of all the snow, right? I thought I may as well stay a while since I was going to drop by and say hi anyway. I told you very clearly I'd be coming home early today. Sure you did, but one man's early is another man's late. How was I supposed to know when you meant? Forget it, it's fine. You'll be home soon if you're only staying for some food, right? Listen, babe, the thing is, I can't make it home tonight. Why not? My mom said I have to stay over at her place. I'll be home tomorrow. Besides, I had a few beers so I can't drive anymore. Sorry. I'll be home before noon tomorrow. <laughs> this is strange. Something doesn't quite add up. So you're telling me you're with your mom and dad at their house right now? Even though your mom and dad are sleeping here tonight? Just whose house are you staying at tonight, Spencer? What? My folks are staying at our place? Yeah, your mom and dad are sat here with me right now. They so bought a bunch of food over. Don't even joke about stuff like this. You know, had she believed you for a sec there, <laughs> as if my parents would do that without telling me. 
I'm telling the truth. They can see every message you sent me. They agreed not to tell you. The plan was to throw you a surprise party for when you got back. Really? Yes, really. Why else would I be saying it? Well, where are you? What are you doing? <laughs> How about picking up the phone? Um, well, you see, the thing is, uh, I'm out drinking with my buddies right now. Sorry, babe. So? Why does that mean you can't answer the phone? Well, uh, can you give me a few minutes? Surely you can manage a quick phone call. Sorry, listen, babe, but the thing is, I'm really drunk. Why do you have to lie? I'd appreciate it if you told me the reason. Going out drinking with your buddies doesn't mean you have to stay the night. You could easily get a taxi. I know, but I thought you'd be mad at me. Where are you right now? Your dad says he'll come pick you up in the car. No, 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 that won't be necessary. I can make it home on my own. How? You're too drunk to drive. I'll get my buddy who doesn't drink to bring me. Just sit tight and wait for me to get back, okay? Won't be long. No, we're going to do a video call. And you're going to show me your surroundings right now. If you don't answer my next call, we're done. I'm done listening to your bullshit excuses. Your mom and dad can't wait to see you either. They say they want to hear what you have to say for yourself. There's something I need to talk to you about, Spencer. Have you decided to forgive me? No. Please come home soon, baby. I, you know this has all been a huge misunderstanding, right? I only lied because I knew it might look bad, and I didn't want to make you think I was doing anything I shouldn't have been. Which part am I misunderstanding? You were at your co-worker Katie's house. Were those rose petals on the bed in the background on the video call? Sure I was, but it wasn't what it looked like, babe. I swear. How many times have I got to say if you to believe me? Me and her were just friends. It's not what you think. She has a kid for crying out loud. Isn't she a single mom? <laughs> I guess it wouldn't be weird if she was lonely. But I never imagined in a million years you and her would... No, it's not like that. I swear on my life, I'm not cheating on you, baby. I, I love you and no one else. Katie told you herself, right? That kid really likes me. He was begging me to stay and I would have felt bad leaving him, that's all. No matter which way you look at it, it doesn't add up. Why would a married man be at his single co-worker's house on a New Year's Eve, drinking wine on a bed covered in rose petals in a candlelit room? You and Katie have been having it away behind my back, haven't you? Do you seriously think I can forgive you for this? God, why does everything have to be sexual with you? Katie's a sensitive girl, so she likes to set the scene, so what? Surely you don't actually think I'd cheat on you with someone with a kid. What does her having a kid having to do with anything? You wanted to screw her, so you screwed her. No, no, no. I could never do that with someone with a kid. He's nearly seven years old. Surely you don't actually think I'd want to play stepdad to some little brat I don't even know. Like, like I need that kind of hassle in my life. Besides, I have you. Why would I need anyone else? But the plan was to divorce me and marry her, wasn't it? No, no way. You're dead wrong. Not only does she come with the baggage of a seven-year-old kid, but... Just think about it, babe. Katie might be the same age as us, but she went through childbirth. That does things to your body, like I'd ever go for someone that saggy. Wow, you're horrible. You made Katie cry. Huh? Wait, what? I'm with her right now. No way, you're lying. Have I ever lied to you? Your mom and dad really were in the house with me before, right? Was I lying then? This might be hard for you to believe, but some of us have morals. Unlike you, I don't lie every five seconds. 
I'm sorry. Does that mean you finally admit? Not that it makes any difference if you do. Katie already told me you two have been seeing each other for the last six months. Score! Now I have all the proof of the affair I need. We'll be discussing this through our lawyers from now on. The divorce, I mean. Rose, I was never serious about Katie. It kind of just happened. She said she was struggling with some stuff at work. Uh, I felt bad for her, so I said she could talk to me if she wanted, but one thing led to another and we got carried away. So that's why you cheated on me? You think that magically gets you off the hook? At least now, I finally know why you've been coming late from work all this time. You were over at her place. I promise I'll never see her again. She no longer exists as far as I'm concerned. Do whatever you want. We're getting a divorce. It's not my problem anymore. Rose, please just wait. Can we talk things through? Please just give me a chance. <laughs> a chance? A chance for what? A chance to prove how much I care about you. I promise I'll never betray you again. You had plenty of chances to prove you cared about me. But you were more than happy to treat me like crap when I didn't know about the affair. Take Christmas, for example. You spent it with Katie, didn't you? You've got some nerve to claim you care about me after lying and treating me like I didn't even exist for months on end so you could go off to your lover girl's house. But me and her are done now. Finished. Like I just told you, we'll never see each other again. I don't care anymore. You had plenty of chances, and you blew them all away. The only thing now is divorce. I worked so hard to make things easier for you because I thought you were swamped with work. I know now what a fool I have been. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry, baby. I know I'm a dirtbag. Please don't leave me, I'm begging you. You're the one who left me, Spencer. It was all nothing but lies. A relationship is built on a solid foundation of trust, and you bulldozed ours. I can never believe another word that comes out of your mouth. How could I possibly spend another second of my life with someone like you? After that, me, Spencer, and both of our lawyers got together to discuss the divorce, which was finalized quickly without any issues. He clung to the marriage desperately, refusing to accept his fate, but I had mountains of evidence of the affair, and not a single person had his back. Eventually, he signed the papers through gritted teeth with a tear in his eye. I heard his mom and dad told him he was no longer their son, and to never show his face at their house again. He was forced to pay both me and Katie a hefty sum in compensation. I found this out during the divorce proceedings, but apparently, right from the get-go, he gave her false hope that they had a future together by filling her head with lies about how committed he was to her and her son. Apparently, even adoption was mentioned. Katie told me he would never gotten involved with him if she knew he was playing her. Still, cheating is cheating. She was forced to pay me compensation too, and my bank balance has never looked happier. She was furious when he made all those horrible comments about her body to me in those messages. Seething with rage, she told everyone at the care home where they work about their relationship while Spencer was on shift. He flipped out with the questions of, Is it true, Spencer? started flooding him from his co-workers. He stormed into the cafeteria and started yelling at Katie like he'd been possessed by a demon, after which the road to end all rows unfolded in front of virtually the entire workforce. With that, the shameful two became the talk of the workplace, and it was obvious they weren't going to be able to carry on working together. Within days, they'd both been moved to different care homes. Oh yeah, they got demoted for arguing in front of everyone. Sadly for him, 
His reputation within the company already preceded him at the new workplace, and his new co-workers all knew about his ignoble shenanigans. Lastly, I heard he's currently on leave for depression, unable to bear the shame and regret of it all. He'll probably quit before long. Not that I care. He's not my problem anymore. I'd like to think he'll use this time to take a long hard think about his behavior and change for the better. But I'm not holding my breath. I felt a little emotionally unstable during the weeks after the divorce. Between the shock of finding out my husband was a rat and the relief of being rid of him, my head was in a strange place. But I'm blessed to have an amazing support network of friends and family. And thanks to their gentle, kind encouragement, I think I'm slowly returning back to my bright, cheerful old self. It would be easy to be down in the dumps over what happened to me, but if you ask me, I dodged a bullet by finding out who he really was before I wasted any more time with him. Life is all about perspective. I'm not ready to look for love again just yet. My focus right now is being kind and patient with myself and allowing my heart the time it needs to heal. But I'm still human, so I'm sure I want to meet that special someone eventually. I'm gonna build myself up into the best version of myself I can possibly be. So that, when I do meet Mr. Wright, he won't be able to resist.